Hello. Hello. We're on a bit of a... Dizzy heights. <laughs> and what you won't know until you see some video later down the line, or YouTube piece down the line, why we're at dizzy heights. We've been out of the water. This is day five, isn't it, for blacking? Yep. So yes, all of that will be to follow this week's vlog. Oh gosh, <laughs> where are we? Um, Drake Holes. Drake Holes and going Retford. Yes, Retford and Osberton. There you go. I do, I do try and remember what I've done. <laughs> we got stuck in a lock. No, we didn't. <laughs> All we, the got stuck we got in stuck in a lock. And we went to Trankar murals, which yes. was really interesting. Yep. And a thousand year old yew tree. Mm. So there's lots of content there. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. Yeah, there's nothing else, is there? There was so. a lot to go on. Don't forget, please like and subscribe below if you haven't already. Help us grow the channel. Ping that button. And we'll see you at the end. Enjoy the clouds behind. So these are the Trakar murals in St Peter's Church in Clayworth. They were painted in 1905 by renowned Scottish artist Phoebe Anne Trakar to mark her husband returning safely from the Boer War. They were renovated in 1996 by a renowned art restorer by the name of Elizabeth Hurst. They are stunning and well worth a visit if you're in the area. They do have brown and white tourist signs pointing towards them if you're travelling by car and they are within walking distance of the canal. Another point of interest to us in the church was this plaque on the wall for a lady who previously had lived in Kilnhurst, which is obviously where we were on the boat before we came to the Chesterfield Canal. And she lived to the amazing age of 83, back in the 1800s, when life expectancy was actually only 47. This first bridge we went under after leaving Drake Holes was stunning. It's called Old Man Bridge and has got a concrete plaque of an old man in the centre at the top of the bridge. This is a really, really pretty part of the canal, as the majority of it is. The trees are just all starting to come into bloom. And then as we got a bit further along, there's the reed beds, which in another month or so's time is probably going to cause more problems for boaters needing to go down the reed hatch more often. But having done it early in the season, we were quite fortunate and haven't had too many problems. There's a big swan nest there too. This is Paul bringing in the boat to moor up at the end of the line on the moored boats at the Retford and Worksop Boat Club. Our bow thrusters aren't working at the moment, so he does really well to manoeuvre the boat. I will manoeuvre it, but not when there's other boats around because I'm too worried about bumping into them at the moment. I need to do a bit of confidence building before I can do manoeuvres like this. Once we left Retford and Worksop Boat Club, I moved the van up to Clarbra and then walked back to meet Paul on the boat. There's very few stopping points along the canal apart from under bridges, so it was quite nice to walk along the towpath and be able to get a bit of video like this as well. As you can still see, very narrow just here. So, we're here at Clarbra and um, we're going to visit a church. Uh, St John the Baptist. There you go, in Clara. Apparently, this church has a thousand year old yew tree. It's about a mile and a half from the canal where we've left the boat and we've just ambled up. So, here you go the entrance to St John the Baptist churchyard. Very, very nice. Little graveyard as an entrance with the daffodils still out. Yeah, and uh, yeah, this is in the actual um, Nicholson's guide about this yew tree. This is the, the yew tree that's mentioned in the Nicholson guide, yeah, which is a thousand year old. And uh, being a thousand year old, it's got to the point where it needs to be propped up because it's also got a lean on it too. Which is sad, but I suppose at a thousand year old, I'll need leaning up. 
Yeah, all the sensors opened out. And you can clearly see and understand why it probably needs to be propped on the angle that it's sat on. But it's well worth a visit, even if you don't know much about trees. And compared to that one, to them, not Tash, Tash isn't a thousand year old, yeah, they're yew trees, yeah, and this is St John's the Baptist Church, in Clara on Church Lane, really nice, small church, well worth a visit. Some of these locks have got really interesting names, this is Whit Sunday Pie Lock. Well, what I want to show you as well, whilst we're waiting for it to empty to be in the boat in, is these ridges on the edge of the bridge in the stonework, which is where the horses used to pull the work barges with the coal from Eckington and the stone from Anston to take it down to the river Trent to transport it across to the rest of the country. You can see all the reeds there. They're not as bad as they would be later in the summer, so although we are going slowly because of the depth of the canal and the reeds, they would obviously be worse a bit another month or so's time. So this is Retford Town Lock. It's the narrowest lock we've ever done, I think. I don't think we've done one this narrow before. It is literally just the width of the boat. It's going over a very small aqueduct just outside Retford Town Centre, just after Retford Town Lock. The river going under there, and going over the aqueduct over the top. The next bridge we were going under was another quite pretty bridge and it's Retford Cemetery Bridge and from the canal Ret Retford Cemetery looks absolutely huge but very tranquil and peaceful. Just a little bit further along this piece of canal around the next bend with some visitor moorings which are a nice spot to stop as well. Plenty of visitor moorings along this piece of canal. So it was all going so well and then we got stuck in this lock due to a large amount of reeds behind the lock gate. stuck halfway the boat's obviously slightly wider in the middle because yeah. <laughs> it got well, jammed it's halfway well literally yeah it didn't take too long to get sorted and we soon got going again past all these beautiful willow trees which just have such a vibrant color at this time of year as they're coming into leaf Old cottage there. That one looks very old. A few hundred years. 
is moored here on the left hand side so we'll slow down even more as we go past them. We're going to stop soon today because we're going to some friends for barbecue this afternoon. So we were going to try and get to Shire Road because the other side of work stop but we're actually going to stop this side of work stop because obviously it's not ideal to stop in the town with the boat so we'll stop this side and then carry on some more tomorrow. There's a pub just on the left hand side here called the Checkers Inn. This boat here is a Chesterfield Canal Trust boat, obviously a trip boat. Sure that might get used this weekend, being Easter weekend. So the towpath swaps over from one side of the canal to the other here. So the horses years ago would have come under the bridge and up round the path. The path's obviously been changed over the years. It's got steps on it now, wouldn't have steps on it for the horses. And they would go up that side, across the bridge, and then back down this side to carry on along the towpath. This is Osberton Lock. It's really, really pretty around here. So I hope you enjoyed that. I found it interesting content. We certainly enjoyed going to the murals, didn't we? Yeah, a bit of a twist on getting stuck in stuck in a lock. But uh, <laughs> yeah, the murals were great. They were. Um, the tree was different. I was expecting it to be a lot bigger. Yeah, I was expecting it to be huge like an oak tree, and obviously it wasn't. No, but we learn. Yeah. It's got to be part of the travels. Yeah. Well worth a visit though if you're in the area. And don't get stuck in the lock. Yeah, that was um, interesting. But we could have had lots more problems with reeds and later in the year probably would during the summer. So I think we've been quite lucky so far. So far, yeah. yeah. So next week we'll see us get to the tunnel, the east end of Norwood Tunnel. God, yeah, such a, a mad drive. Or steer, <laughs> I should say, not drive because I'm not in a car. Half a mile in reverse to get us there. It was quite impressive. I don't spoil it. <laughs> it was impressive. The wind's blowing again now, isn't it? Yeah, it's don't lose me air. A bit un unsettling being up here on top of a trailer on the boat and the wind getting up. I think we have to go to the pub. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> Bye. See you next week. Bye.